So we're looking at the stats for science extension exam. So these will be the questions from the HSC 2019 paper that included stats. Okay, so for our first question, we're looking at a hospital one that wanted to test whether their animal assisted therapy was better when they used a substitute dog or just a normal toy dog. So they're looking at a toy dog versus robotic dog. And we're going to have a look at the experimental design to test this. So the key points will be that there were 20 patients in total and these were randomly chosen. So they split them into two groups of 10 where one group was given a toy dog while the other group was given a robotic dog. Then during this, there were five minute therapies with these dogs and they looked at quantifying the time spent interacting with the dog and the types of interactions which were occurring every five seconds. So next up, we've got our tables. So when you get into the exam, you wanna just spend plenty of time looking at the tables and digesting what's happening. So for the first table, we got 10 patients in total, and we've seen that they've put the time spent interacting with the dog in minutes. Okay. And then you got the two groups here. You wanna be looking at sample size, types of variables, mean, standard deviation, how close these are together. And we see in figure one, they've got this bar graph and they're comparing the toy dog with the dots versus the robotic dog in blue. And they've got how they interacted with them. So the question that's looking at the statistics for this question is looking at you to work out what statistical analysis you would use for this. So we're looking at promoting patient activity. So we're trying to determine which is better at doing this. So the things you wanna do for this sort of question is explain how stats could be used for this. In other words, look at what tests are going to provide you with useful insights about the data provided. And you wanna encompass all the data points. And then the other thing you wanna do is be able to show you can draw a conclusion from the test you've done. So now we'll break down how to do it. Essentially, you want to state the null and alternative hypothesis and your confidence interval. Then you'll classify the type of data, comment on the standard deviation, and state what test to use. Then you'll go on to tell them what conclusions you could be expected to be able to draw from the tests you've used. So let's have a look at doing it. I've stated my two null hypotheses. So looking at what we saw with the first table, we're going to say that there's no difference between the two robotic and the toy dog. So our null means no difference. Same goes for the second point, which is there's no difference in the number of types of interactions. To prevent p-hacking, we're going to set our confidence interval. And that's our p-value, which we're going to set at less than 0.05. And that's pretty much just done by convention. Okay, so for the table one, we want to work out how many groups we have. So we got two groups and they both contain continuous data. Okay, and we already stated that they had similar standard deviations. So what this tells us is a suitable test to compare two tr different treatment groups would be a student's two-tailed t-test. And the implication of this sort of test is it will tell us whether once group outperforms the other group, and that would inform whether the toy dog or the robotic dog is more suited for this task. Okay, so now we're going to analyze figure one. And to do this, we can use a chi-squared test. And that's because we got categorical data. And the implication of this is that if there is a statistically significant difference, we can reject the null hypothesis we set for the second one. And this would then inform our design because if they preferred to watch the dog, you'd make it more aesthetic. But if they preferred to pat it, you'd make it more of a nice feeling dog. If you finish off with a conclusion, you just want to tell them 
what would happen if you failed to reject or you rejected the null hypothesis one and or two and you just want to kind of provide a possible implication for this result and that's how you get all five of your marks for this question <laughs>